This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And week six, welcome back to the Open Alliance show. It's going to be the Disco Boss 2587 coming out of Texas. We had them on uh, three weeks ago. We had a couple new members of their team. Please welcome on Samil and Guillermo uh, talking about uh, a lot of their progress they've been doing. We're going to show off uh, some of the stuff in CAD. You obviously see uh, a bit of uh, uh, some of their uh, robot assembly coming together behind them. They'll be talking about their progress on those prototypes uh, as they go through. So excited to have you both on. If you don't mind, if you can just uh, introduce uh, who you are so we know which is which, and then uh, let us know what you do on the team as well. Yeah. Uh, my name is Samil Goyal. I am, this is my second year in the FRC, although I am an 11th grader. I just did not do it in uh, ninth grade because of COVID. But uh, I do some CAD work, some building and programming. And last season, I was also the driver of the robot. My name is Guillermo. Uh, it is my second year at FRC as well. I'm a sophomore, 10th grader. I'm a builder and sometimes I CAD a little bit, but mainly I just do what the team requires. Fair enough. I love other people who are just like, you know, what? I'm just going to do what works best for the team. Uh, totally cool with that. So, uh, so as mentioned before, we have a lot to cover uh, with your team uh, going through. Uh, you guys are, are doing a every bot, but with modifications. So I think that's a really cool thing to show uh, case the teams what you are doing to get some inspiration from that. And of course, we have uh, uh, a screen share with some CAD work as well, too. What do you guys want to jump into first? Sure. So I think I'll first give a general overview of our robot design and our goals so that uh, all of you teams out there, you can be familiar with how uh, we like to run over here at the Disco Bots regarding Charged Up. So as you can see behind me, we have, uh, this is our wooden, like basically finalized mock-up of the robot. It's an EveryBot arm. So I hope everyone's familiar with this. And the EveryBot arm is placed on top of a swerve drive. This swerve drive is like the EveryBot dimensions, but we would caution you to go at least two inches longer on the lengthwise because well, we found that to be best in our frame perimeter testing. And along with this arm and the swerve drive, we also are adding a ground intake to the back of the EveryBot so that we can also pick up cones and cubes from the floor and either launch them or just score them down there. So that's the general brief overview of our robot design. So, Greg, looking at, uh, I know you remember the Swerve Rebot or, uh, from a few weeks ago. Uh, how, how are you feeling after watching, Greg, when you uh, saw some of the uh, Week Zero events, that sort of thing? Swerve was very dominant in that. I feel really uh, uh, bullish about this robot. I think it's got a great opportunity. Yeah, I think that I think that there's a lot of really there's a lot of really awesome robots that are being designed this year. I think we probably have some of the largest design diversity that we've had in several years. But I also think that... Uh, with some of the design decisions, teams might have overbit and simpler is sometimes better. So uh, every bot, I think, will still be very, very effective. And I love the concept of like an every bot plus where, you know, disco bots, you guys are saying like, hey, look, we really love the every bot concept, but we're going to do more than just the every bot. And I think that that's a that's a perfect place for the every bot to be. And especially with teams to understand their resources. Um, can we, so here, here's a question for you. So you are, um, you're competing week two in channel view. Um, so you've got, you know, slightly over two weeks left in your build. Uh, what I see behind you is still very much like a wood kind of prototype. When do you start building the final robot? That's a great question. And of course we did struggle with trying to be on time as you can see, because we don't have a robot, but luckily we do have a lot of things like tested beforehand, which is why we only still have a mock-up right now. And that's why, like, you can look on our CAD. It's pretty finalized. That's why the title is also Final V1, uh, as we're screen sharing. And also, uh, we have many things that are already starting to be built final that we can just replace on. So, for example, this is a, the exact match 
of our wooden superstructure that nice. we would put on top of the everybot. So we do have this modular design because one of the fun facts is that the disco bots is spread around uh, three different schools. We are Carnegie High School, Lamar High School, and uh, Westside High School. So from this, we do have to take a modular approach. Sometimes it slows us down, but I think in the end, it's a net positive if we're able to work it very nicely. Cool. So, so it looks like you're you're gonna you're gonna make progress really quickly to converting that to a final robot design. Um, how about uh, how about software, right? So, are you do you have your your programmers working on this robot? Like, are they programming on the wooden version, or are they like where where is your software in in this process? That's a great question. Uh, for our software, firstly, we have things like April tags and visions going on the side, of course. But then we also have, uh, as my teammates discussed in the week three stream of this Open Alliance, we do have our drive base right now is separate from the real Swerve. So these are like a dummy Swerve modules, uh, as we posted on our chief Delphi as well with mm -hmm. the link for these. And it's basically just the exact dimensions of those SDS modules, but they are made out of wood and omni wheels. So the real Swerve drive is actually with our programmers right now. And as we speak, they are coding ferociously on it to make sure everything works great. I, I'm glad to hear you did get your sword drive modules. I think last time we talked, you're still waiting for them to come in. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that those are in and your programmers have an opportunity uh, with that as well. Uh, I do want to bring up, uh, we uh, you we showed your CAD for just a brief moment, but I'd like to hop in a little bit more into it. If there's anything on your uh, superstructure of your robot that you want to uh, talk about or uh, uh, kind of explain a bit more on the direction you're going. Sure. So I think the main interesting thing for uh, most of your teams out there that were looking at the EveryBot would be how we were able to modify it to put it on a Swerve drive. Uh, my teammate discussed with this more in depth in the previous one, but I'll go over it briefly, which is that uh, the main thing is if you copy the exact superstructure, which looks like an A shape from the EveryBot and just stick it on top of a Swerve drive, they start interfering with the Swerve modules mainly. So we were able to make some changes to the superstructure which is why, you know, it's vertical like this and it looks a bit funnier, but it does work very well. It's quite sturdy and it's great. On top of that, you can see at the front part, we have this uh, ground intake region. This ground intake is uh, like, we also have it open here, which is a more detailed version of it. And this ground intake will allow us to make our cycles much faster and it allows us to pick up any discarded pieces and we'll be able to either act as an assistant to our alliance that just is able to take stuff and quickly put it inside the community for the rest of the robots to score, or we can score score on lower regions for quick points and quick links. That's So that's going to be really interesting. So from a, from a strategy perspective, um, so you're not doing a handoff, right? So you're, you're, you're doing a ground intake that's just solely like for the shuffler or the, like the, the bottom um, scoring. So how will your drive team make the decision when you're out there on the open field, whether to go pick up something from the ground or to make a full run cycle to go grab one that you can score higher mid? So I think um, most of how the drivers make those kind of decisions is based on the posting alliance and our own teammates that we have. If some we have teammates that are able to go really fast, on the other way and like to the loading zone and do a cycle, then we might only focus on picking up, as my teammate said, discarded uh, game elements. Um, if it's the opposite way and our teammates can only pick up those ground, easy to pick up discarded game elements, then we might only focus on um, doing the full cycle. Um, most of our decisions also come from our, like usually a mentor that is there as a coach. But I think, that's also a great quality to have in a driver. It's just that decision making, it's hard to learn. Yeah, like as you were saying before, so many teams are going for the over complex route, which they have like triple, quadruple jointed arms trying to get their claw to perfectly pick up like this and put it on. And we can take advantage of their capabilities by just being like, for my prediction at least, in the uh, lower level competitions, like before state or championships, it will be that our robot could serve super well as just a guy who can accumulate so many game pieces into the community zone for the rest to deal with. 
I, I think you guys are just uh, living up to the name every bot, right? You're just like every alliance, every bot fit into any role pretty much. So I think that's I think that's fantastic to hear how you're looking at every just being so plus. versatile. What's that? Every bot plus. Yeah, well, there you go, right? Charge a subscription for that while you're at it. So uh, <laughs> so talk to us more. Uh, anything else from uh, CADWISE that you wanted to overview uh, before we talk about anything else in your robot? Um, I think mainly for the CAD, like I would just like to encourage because – you know, we might not be the team that can show you the greatest CAD down to the precise caps nut, or we might not be the team that will show you the coolest mechanisms of all time. But we do want to, like, act as a resource to other teams. Like, you can look on our Chief Delphi Ask Us question, yeah. and you can also look into our CAD model links and see about how we are able to use a good balance between our time usage and our accuracy of the CAD to be able to make our parts very well. And that's how we're able to, you know, get good progress done, especially being so separated as a team instead of like usual when people are together. So with this uh, a couple of weeks uh, for your uh, next event, what are kind of the, the immediate steps that you want to go in? And is there anything else that you wanted to cover uh, today talking about uh, with your team? Sure. Um, I guess one cool thing that we can cover is that our team also really likes our tools and likes to be fancy with them. So I know Guillermo can show you uh, one thing we have. So these are like 3D printed parts, which you can insert into either Max tube or just regular aluminum extrusion. And with this, like, it allows you to easily drill or align holes. So we found that pretty helpful. We will post the link very soon on our Chief Delphi page uh, for the Open Alliance. So make sure you watch that. This goes inside any Max tube so that you can like not crush it yep. because that is a mistake that a lot of uh, members do make is uh, crushing their own robot. Can you talk about this? Greg, this what also, I, was, I got to cut in. Greg, what do you think about those? Uh, talking about Max tube and how they work out. I mean, I, I think that uh, it's a smart, smart uh, move to uh, put something on the inside of the tube. Um, uh, kids, uh, you know, tightening stuff down. I mean, Max Tube, along with any of the tube, a lot of things are going to really, really thin because from a structural perspective, like from outside forces, it's totally fine and strong. But, you know, people don't realize that when you're just even just tightening a 1032, you've got a wedging action that you have tremendous force, like in a vise or any other screw. So it can pretty easily deform it. So putting a block in there, uh, whether it's a 3D printed block, an end cap, or something like even just an old piece of wood that you cut to size and slide in there, preventing the crushing is a is a good preventative measure. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, what else did you uh, want to show off? Uh, I think uh, lastly, we can just talk about the robot once more. So, uh, you know, I would encourage teams, of course, uh, get all your driver practice and programming practice as much as possible. And uh, also try to keep things simple. I think that's one thing that our team really excelled at this season, which is that we did not overcomplicate the stuff. We saw a great EveryBot design arm that will do uh, almost all of the game tasks, and we just took it. We saw that we needed to modify the superstructure. So instead of like building our custom serve module or anything, we just uh, you know changed the superstructure slightly to meet our description. We saw that we wanted to pick up stuff from the ground. We just made a simple ground intake with only two uh, what's called two shafts on it, right? That could easily spin. So, you know, with this guidance, I know maybe it won't be that much help since it's already like build season all done, but uh, I would encourage teams that that's what, if you keep on going, it will be perfect. Well, and stuff lives on the internet forever too, right? So it's always for future seasons for teams to reference back and uh, learn from as well. So we're excited for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I was going to say like, that's, that's ultimately the thing, right? So it's like the design lesson that somebody learns when they're looking at maybe their robot that was complicated in a direction. They think about all the stuff that they did versus looking at uh, what you did um, and finding some success that might influence decisions for future seasons as well. Yeah. Because I assume that we will see a 2024 every bot and a 2025 every bot, uh, regardless of what the game is. So I think that that's, that's a, a good perspective that people can kind of realize that you don't just need to follow the bare every bot instructions you can take that as design inspiration as well as anything else so it's a really great philosophy yep. yeah and if anyone has any questions make sure to reach out on twitter uh, youtube or the open alliance we're very active and we 
uh, we're just waiting for the first person to ask us something nice or anything at least. All right, everybody, jump in right now on the Chief Delphi thread. Start asking some questions in there. Love to see you get those questions as well. Discobots, okay. thank you so much uh, for showcasing off some great insight uh, into the uh, that we'll call the EveryBot Plus uh, that you have on your team. And uh, we can't wait to uh, see your performance at Channel View and Beyond. Thanks a lot. Thank you so thank much. You so much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.